When you have no energy, you have to shift your focus. And I'm gonna talk about how to do that in this video. Now when I say shift your focus, I don't just mean shift your focus, I mean like shift your entire existence in a way. Shift your whole energy in the moment, and that's possible. In fact, you can do it immediately. There are two main steps when it comes to this, at least that I've found. One of them is more physical, the other one is a little bit more mental. The physical one is changing your state, using body language for instance. The mental one is like self-talk or inner dialogue. So we're gonna talk about those right here after the intro. With changing your state, the connection between your physical and mental state is kind of untouchable, or rather undeniable. This is like fucking Tony Robbins 101. If you don't know who Tony Robbins is, he could probably explain all this shit better than me. <laughs> Look him up, he's a fantastic mentor in pretty much any area of life. The dude is a fucking legend in the field of self-development. So when you change your state, you change your attitude, you are physically training yourself to feel more empowered. And when you feel more empowered, your whole shit begins to change. With body language, one way to do this is by changing your body language. When you're depressed and all sad and gloomy and you feel like shit, I want you to find or maybe take pictures of yourself in that state and that mood. And when you take the picture, don't try to cover up your mood or anything like that. I know myself, the last thing a lot of people want to do is cover up their mood with a fake smile if they're doing something like that. If you're alone and you're feeling like that, take a selfie or something. Now if you ever take a selfie in a really good mood, put that selfie next to the one you just took and compare them. Try this with video too. I heard somewhere that your body language is like your biography or autobiography in motion. So video is really great because you can actually see yourself in motion in those states. When I'm feeling on top of my shit in the middle of a video and I'm not feeling like that later, sometimes later I'll watch that video just to understand what it looks like like when I'm just a fireball of energy. But when you compare those two states, you may realize that it's like looking at two totally different people. And that's the effect that body language has on your mood. Your mood will affect your body language, but your body language can affect your mood, which is crazy. I think it's cool. People who knew me like five to six years ago will look at me now and they'll say, dude, this kid is not the same. He's like a completely different person. And yeah, I looked at myself. I was like, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing right, right? <laughs> You gotta cover every base you can. Part of what makes me feel at least like a totally different person is this is called power posing. Instead of crossing my arms, for example, in the middle of conversation, I now put my hands on my hips. When I started doing it, I was like, dude, this looks like fucking, really fucking stupid. I thought, like, I look like a fucking, I think I'm a superhero. But superheroes, right? They're in positions of power. They're dominant. They're like, bro, I'm defending my fucking city and I put my life on that. Maybe if you're used to feeling anxious or depressed or you feel that way all of a sudden, it can be a little scary. But if you stand in a power pose, for two minutes, no matter what your mood, your testosterone levels go up like 21%, I think. And your chemical, that makes you quicker on your feet, more energetic, focused, for lack of a better word. Actually, kind of horny. <laughs> then your cortisol levels, the stress hormone, they go down, I think, the same percentage. I hear 18 in some places, other places say shit like 25. I don't know. But you see my point, right? It raises confidence and a feeling of self-empowerment. And it lowers feelings of self-doubt. Like, I can't do this. If you're just fucking drooping your head down, like think about Winnie the Pooh. Look at Eeyore. That dude was depressed as fuck all the time. Look at Tigger. Are you an Eeyore or a Tigger? Which one do you want to be? Tigger was all about that power pose. His body language, it was very expansive. I'm more like Tigger now than I ever was, probably. I mean, I walk very fast. I look like someone shoved something rather of large size up my ass and I don't realize it's there but that's because I'm on a fucking mission going from one place to the other. If you see me actually just standing, it's a power pose. Even when I'm in a bad mood, no matter what, it's always a power pose. I'm trying to keep my head up too because these are expansive. They show expansive body language and that very subconsciously affects your mood. So they lift my mood. This is another tool that just makes you feel more empowered. Stop putting your hands in your pockets. Stop crossing your arms. Just makes you feel more uninterested and shit, unfocused. Put your hands on your hips. Show your torso, you would be surprised at the difference it makes. Like I said, originally I thought it looked fucking dumb. I honestly kind of still think it does, but I do it anyway because it raises my confidence and it makes me feel empowered and it fucking blasts my energy to the other level. But I swear over time, if you really look at yourself and think about it, you would probably be surprised at the difference it makes. I do a lot of this now, so subconsciously, I barely really think about the differences and this is body language alone. And it's just a few examples, just a few. As far as self-talk, when it comes to self-talk, you are kind of what you tell yourself. If you say that you're the shit, that's gonna translate to you being the shit. And you're gonna feel like you can do anything. If you say that you are shit, like you're just a bag of hot flaming bullshit and that nobody loves you, nobody is really gonna love you because you say to yourself that you're just 
a bunch of shit. These are the things that you believe, the things you tell yourself, and that seriously affects you. I think a natural tendency is to underestimate the effects words have on people, especially words that people tell themselves. A huge habit of people who perform very highly in really any field over a long period of time is shown to be positive self-talk. Like the type of shit like, I can fucking do this, I will do this, if I don't feel like it, I will, because it's just fucking exciting. So making sure your self-talk is positive, that's really important. If you're lying to yourself, you wouldn't even say that, indirectly especially, if you know the reason you're saying these things to yourself. I would say you're just trying to exploit your own intentions and hacking your brain to get what you want out of it. This isn't about your brain and what it wants. This is about what you want. And if you get nothing else out of this video, I want you to very clearly understand that more than anything. And the fact that you have a fucking like old ass, like two million year old brain, a fucking computer inside your skull, and it's designed for you to survive, not for you to be happy. Happiness is a choice. It's not a biological instinct. So it has to be something, even if it's not natural, it has to be something. You train yourself, you gotta hack yourself and teach yourself, look, I'm not gonna let my demons get the best of me. When it comes to inner dialogue, here's a rough example of a conversation I had with myself in my little inner dialogue box the other day. Because it was 7.50 a.m., I always have my Echo device say, Look man, you gotta get to work. You may not want to, it may not tie in with your long-term goals, but you have a town to build and a world to save. So get your fucking shit and get the fucking shit out of your fucking apartment right fucking now. I heard that and I was like, fuck this stupid work. It's so fucking boring. I don't even like doing it. It's fucking lame. I'm not gonna do it in 30 years. Why would I bother doing it now? I'm so much better at music and making these videos and shit anyway. And then because things like this are very habitual for me, I mean, I'm, I'm improving still, but to kind of shift and change, I said to myself, wait, you're being a bitch and hear me out whether you want to or not. You have arms and legs and a gorgeous head of hair that is the same color as your eyes. You live in fucking America. You have a mouth. You can say what you wish. You have a studio you work in and make money from in your spare time. You make music. You have all these unique skills you willingly taught yourself. You have a sound of your own. You go to work. You get paid to take initiative to learn another new skill. You get to escape your home and enter the outside world. Breathe in the nice air. Be around the people of your city that will cheer you on in give or take five to ten years. And basically a bunch of ego stroking. <laughs> but honestly, I mean, I don't say those things about myself to other people unless in a video where I'm giving them as an example. But it's honestly just self talk positive self-talk selling myself on the idea that going to work is fucking fun it's cool and if you're in a situation like this for me if I have trouble with that I'm trying to think of the times I was at work like dude there's nowhere I'd rather be like maybe in my studio or I can make videos or music or something but I'm a little indifferent in those moments I'm talking about those times I know a lot of people would kill to have what I have and I guarantee fucking tea a lot of people maybe even more people would kill to have what you have little do many of us know the 99% of us complaining about the 1% don't realize the 1% is the 1% of the 1% of the 1% of the 1%. The 99% I just mentioned are actually the 1% probably most wealthy in the world. The rest of the world is making so much less than us, it's crazy. And we rarely take a second to think of the positive things in our life, things we love that we are responsible for, even that we aren't responsible for. We let our emotions guide us. We don't guide our emotions. We are slaves to ourselves. And the point of this video is to say that it doesn't have to be like that. You don't have to tell yourself things like that. You don't have to treat yourself like that. A couple great fucking books on this are Presence by Amy Cuddy, Harvard professor. It's about body language and how it affects your confidence. I started power posing and other stuff after listening to the audiobook. It definitely changed my life in many subtle ways. Another book about success, but it's far more mechanical, yet easy, practical thinking. Other books don't really talk about shit like this is Awaken the Giant Within by Tony Robbins. I'm gonna link both of these in the descriptions if you wanna check out some of the reviews or something. What do you guys do when you have no energy? Like, that actually works. <laughs> actually, if you do things that don't work, please tell me about the so other people in the comments know what to maybe look out for and be like, okay, I, I, I gotta not do that. You guys have anything else you want me to talk about in future videos? Let me know in the comments and I'll give you a shout out if and when I use them. If you have any questions, please feel free to hit me up. There are links at the bottom of the description of all my social media. Also at the bottom of the description, there's a link to my new production kits where you can find the equipment and software that I use to make music and these videos. If you buy any, I get commission, which helps me build this channel and keep making these videos for you guys. I made all the beats in this video. If you ever want to use them, you can find them at samuel.world. Make sure to leave a like if you like it, subscribe if you haven't already. If you could draw on that little bell to receive a notification every time I drop a new video, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can find me everywhere and I will see you then.